Prescription products require completion of an online medication consultation with an independent healthcare provider through the LifeMD platform and are only available if prescribed. Subscription required. Individual results may vary. Additional restrictions apply at LifeMD.com. Read all warnings before using GLP-1s. Side effects may include a risk of thyroid C-cell tumors. Do not use GLP-1s if you or your family have a history of thyroid cancer. If you've struggled for years to lose weight and have given up hope, did you know you can now access GLP-1 prescription medications through LifeMD? LifeMD is now offering eligible patients online access to GLP-1s, the breakthrough prescription medication that can help you lose body fat and weight. Listen to what people are saying. Probably the easiest thing I've ever done. The medication comes in the mail and it's very easy to use. I've been able to live my normal lifestyle and I've lost 20 pounds already and I've never felt better. It changed my life. And here's the best part. Your insurance may cover 100% of the cost of your medication. So go to TryLifeMD.com to have your eligibility checked right now. Get started today at TryLifeMD.com. That's T-R-Y-L-I-F-E-M-D.com. It's Monday. And it's July 29th. And the word of the day is Kamala, which means lotus in Sanskrit. Used in a sentence. It's pronounced Kamala. Say it right, you ignorant rubes. She's going to be president of the United States. Okay. As an ignorant rube, I just want to say it's saying President Harris is going to be a big relief in a bunch of ways. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't understand what makes them think I'm too dumb to pronounce a three syllable name as some gotcha on someone else. Yeah, that's right? fair. In your fair. face, I'm an idiot. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptic. On this week's episode, our presidential candidate can touch their toes. They somehow didn't have a contingency plan for if Brandon lets go. <laughs> and we find a movie nemesis for Cocaine Bear. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen... Before we get started, very important, happy National Lasagna Day and National Chicken Wing Day. Oh. Noah, Heath is stealing my podcast intro. Tell him to make awkward small talk no, with they, us. Okay. It's true, Heath. You are supposed to ask us our favorite cereal or something. I won't be combined by your expectation. All right. All right. That's fair. And I like those two holidays. I like that they're on the same day. That's good. I think that's they an unnecessary share, which competition. Right. Yeah, exactly. Whichever yeah. one came second really is kind of being a dick about it. I feel like there's a crossover potential in there. A buffalo chicken wing national lasagna. Boom. Fantastic. Go. Did we just invent something amazing? No. That sounds gross. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> nice. <laughs> in our lead story tonight, I've been getting into cooking recently. I've been working really hard to learn some new stuff, and I put a bunch of work into my latest creation, a delectable dish of slow-braised, crow for me to eat mm -hmm. and that's because for the very first time in all of american history i was wrong about a thing a couple episodes ago we talked about joe biden's terrible debate performance and the ensuing calls for him to end his campaign and make way for a new candidate and i was worried that a last minute switch would be chaos and lead to a weird contentious brokered convention and very possibly be a net negative well it turns out I was 100% wrong about that. In a selfless act of patriotism, Joe Biden stepped aside last week. And then in a shocking display of cohesion, mm -hmm. the Democratic Party immediately snapped to attention in lockstep and coalesced behind Kamala Harris. I did not think it would go this well, but it clearly has. I was wrong and I'm fucking excited now. Okay, so for the record, I wasn't here that episode, so I wasn't wrong, which makes me officially the brains and brawn of the podcast, No, no he's the wild card. I'm the brains, and I'm not wrong until November 6th. So. Yeah, that's fair. And a big thanks to several people who helped sway my opinion for the better. One is a listener who very patiently discussed the topic with me online. I gave him a full mea culpa in my last message. It might be the first time ever that an internet discussion helped lead to a meaningful change of opinion. Great, great work. His arguments were already seeping into my brain by the time the announcement from Biden happened. Uh, another big thanks to my delightful fiance, Anne, who very smoothly and intelligently 
ninjaed my thought process that afternoon of the big announcement and got me to think that I had landed in the right place myself. And then I was like, hold on, did you fucking inception me? And she was like, no, what? You're way too smart to get inceptioned. So good times. Got me there. And you really do love brunch with her friends. I don't know if you know. As it turns out, yeah. (laughs) And of course, a big thanks to Kamala Harris. When I saw the news that Biden had stepped aside and endorsed Harris, my immediate reaction, despite my thoughts before this, it was nothing but positive. I was worried about a last minute switch, but right away I had positive emotions and thoughts about American politics for the first time in a while. I started picturing the WWE style debate thing that I was joking about on that episode, but then I was picturing, you know, in a more realistic way without the flying drop kick. I don't want to sacrifice that, but I get it. Probably not going to happen. And she is going to kick some ass if another debate ever happens. I'm guessing it's not going to happen because no. Donald Trump's a coward. But then we'll get to spend the rest of the election cycle talking about how Donald Trump's a coward. And even without a debate, we'll get plenty of Kamala Harris outbraining Trump and the rest of the Republican Party. And hopefully her campaign is going to spend the next three months just constantly challenging Trump to debates and I don't know, anything else, games of chess, stratego, uh, <laughs> naming words like person, woman, man, camera, TV, because yeah, that's hard. Like, right. Anything they can think of as a challenge. Yeah, as of three days ago, the best that Fox News could come up with was calling her the original Hawk to a girl. So I think she's going to do okay. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's, and that's a step up from the she laughs and dances a lot line they were going with. Right, like, like literally their first line of attack against Harris was she seems to enjoy existing on Earth. No, I resent that too. I get it. <laughs> also, we can't pronounce a three syllable name. It's yeah, complicated. Also, the yeah, K throws you off. It's, it's yeah. So other than the obvious excitement about Kamala Harris, my favorite part is the crazy panic we're getting from the GOP mm-hmm. right now. They were feeling great about the election. And they were dominating the news cycle with their convention and the announcement of couch fucker J.D. Vance as Trump's running mate. Big pin in that. And then everything got flipped on him. So now they're all coming up with insane lies about conspiracy theories that don't even matter if they're true. The first main category is the idea that Biden stepped aside in a bloodless coup. We got that opinion from a bunch of Republicans who supported a literal bloodful coup attempt. Yep. So that was fun. That includes Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey, who said, this is a coup of a puppet regime. Presumably the secret puppet master is the vice president of the United States in that hmm. theory. We also heard from Missouri Representative Mark Alford, who said, while President Trump took a bullet for democracy, the progressive Democrats are taking a wood chipper to democracy by shredding the will of 14 million primary voters. <laughs> I'm assuming he means the, the 14 million people who voted for Biden and Harris in mm-hmm, the primary. Mm-hmm. Oh, right there on the ticket. It's right oh. there on the top. Yep. And Missouri Senator. And of course, you know, the cat being spritzed with water is how he usually looks. Josh Hawley weighed in as well, saying... Now the Democrats are rigging their own elections. What would they, this line of attack is just fucking hilarious to me, right? Because what they're faulting the Democrats for doing is bowing to the will of the people, right? Like, how dare you discard people's opinions just because they've changed them? Like, so if I pick McDonald's over Burger King and then we get to McDonald's and it's on fire, the right thing to do is not to go to McDonald's anyway. We don't go in and order. You're not thwarting my fucking will by pulling an <laughs> audible here. Yeah. Another angle of the GOP panic is the idea that if Joe Biden won't be running for reelection, he is therefore unfit to be president and has to step down right away. And if he doesn't resign, a bunch of Republicans are calling for the 25th Amendment to be invoked in order to forcefully remove Biden from office. According to Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas, if he's unfit to campaign, he should not have the nuclear codes. It's that simple. They know that would make Kamala Harris president right now, mm-hmm. right? Do, they seem confused by do that. Do they think we'd just do the election early I if they get our guy out? <laughs> also, their guy was caught on camera picking his teeth with the nuclear codes at a Wendy's or some shit, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Stop pretending like you give a shit about that. Excellent point. And that brings us to the biggest conspiracy of all, 
that Democrats have been doing a giant cover up to hide the fact that Joe Biden is just about to die of a secret terminal illness. Proponents of that theory include Ron DeSantis and Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. According to Ronnie D, it's a, quote, massive cover up. And according to Johnson, quote, Democrats have been complicit in the largest political cover up in history. OK, look, I find the like Joe Biden is too old to run the country narrative, like wildly ableist and, and frighteningly ignorant of how the country is actually run. But if they're covering up that Joe Biden is old, they are doing a terrible job of it. What? Can we admit? <laughs> also, we it, got it. It's weird for them to make up a game that we weren't playing and declare themselves the losers of it, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's fun. It's a fun thing they did. And while the Speaker of the House was talking about the largest cover up in all of history, the Freedom Caucus lunatics were handing him their beers. Turns out the largest cover up ever of Biden being about to die is actually the less insane version oh, of this it? particular conspiracy theory. According to others, Joe Biden is secretly dead already. <laughs> to be clear, that would make Kamala Harris president right now, the incumbent mm -hmm. president, and generate a swell of sympathy. So Democrats would probably mention that out loud. Probably. But according to the idiots, that's neither here nor there. Another thing that's in neither of the places is the fact that Biden got COVID last week and announced it very much publicly. But regardless, a couple days of absence from TV news led to the claim that he's probably dead and then like phase three profit or something not clear i'm gonna call this the weekend at bernie sanders theory <laughs> and among the proponents of that theory we have you guessed it lauren bobert mm -hmm. after about two days off camera for joe biden lobobes posted quote i demand proof of life from joe biden today by 5 p.m Either Joe Biden lets me give him a heege at Beetlejuice by 5 p.m. today, or I am the president now. Yeah, so Joe Biden never provided Lauren Boebert personally with proof of life on Twitter or whatever she thought was going to happen. But then he was alive after that. So that kind of did the job. Strangely enough, we did not see any public retractions from Boebert or the other Biden is dead people. We did, however, get a follow up theory from involuntary former professor and intellectual dark webmaster Brett Weinstein. He posted a video explaining that Biden's absence and Biden's return as an alive person were both part of the conspiracy. Oh. According to Brett, it was all a deep state psyop to trick people into making accusations that Biden was dead and then make him look stupid when he wasn't dead, all in order to discredit those people who were just about to prove that Biden hired the guy who shot Trump in the ear. It's the perfect oh, crime. Right. Yeah, no, look, when your goal is to make Lauren Boebert look stupid, all the plans are perfect, as it turns out. <laughs> I also heard about one conspiracy theory that I absolutely love. This one comes from the legendary Cecil something Italian. He's thinking it's all an amazing ploy by Dark Brandon to throw the debate on purpose and set up this big switcheroo. That was a joke from Cecil, but I like to believe it in my heart, and I think he does too, to some extent. Yeah, but it goes so much deeper than that, Heath. What if I told you the Democrats have been throwing all of politics for the last two decades in a <laughs> prep for their big comeback? Ah, oh, shit, I'm a right winger. Yeah, I right, became a right winger right. again, no. didn't I? So I? Okay, so I want to give credit to Cecil's full conspiracy theory here. Uh, his suggestion was that Biden threw the debate on purpose specifically so that the Republicans would all be screaming about how, you know, you can't have an old, incoherent guy as your presidential candidate. And then he, like he would walk off stage <laughs> while that was still echoing. And I'm, I'm like, I look, I am happy to revise that right the fuck into the history books if I get a chance. I know historians. That's canon. So here's what I learned. We should Always do a bloodless coup instead of a primary. Hell yeah. Super good move. I love this. So to be clear, I'd love it for the Democratic Party to choose the first woman of color at the top of the ticket by using a perfectly normal Democratic process. 
But if that doesn't work, it fuck doesn't. it. Bloodless coup. Let's yeah. do it. Kamala Harris is already crushing it and already making the polls look better. I cannot wait to vote for her. If people were refusing to vote for Biden, but they're on board for Harris, um, those people are insane. But seriously, mm -hmm. whatever works. Sure. I don't care. And on a rare happy note about American politics, I'm hoping at least this indicates a few baby steps towards a more progressive overall philosophy in the Democratic Party. So show up in November and prove it. Oh, well, no, Heath, uh, she has to earn our votes, remember? Uh, we had a different candidate in mind, and now we get to hold fascism above the head of the people who might literally die if she doesn't win um, because we didn't get our guy. Yeah, people have been telling us this for this, like this a decade now. I don't know if this you've heard. Fun. No, that Good They upshot. owe us now. Well, they owe us. Speaking of the mental state of protest voters in a general election that includes Donald fucking Trump, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And then I said, well, only if you agree to put the weasel away. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a really good one. So good. Right? Right. So how, how would you guys like score that? Score that? Like the story? Yeah. Right. Is that like, it, would it be a 9 out of 10, a 10 out of 10? What, what do you guys think? I, I, I wasn't really thinking about a score. Right. You were, no, me neither. Well, but, right, but I've asked you, because now you're thinking about one. So just kind of like, you know, just throw a number out there. Just uh, like, what, what do you really think? Okay, why though? Oh, uh, well, because somebody on Twitter said this thing about me not being funny, and I just thought that I could present them with a data set, you know, and just conclusively prove them wrong uh no it actually it sounds like you're making some pretty unhealthy comparisons right now yeah have you considered therapy therapy for wanting to be right mm -hmm. the way that you are right now yeah if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So I can find the right therapist for me without all the legwork? Exactly. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, guys. Well, I give this conversation a 7 out of 10. Wait, why only a 7? I don't know. I just, I felt like it could have could have popped more, B bigger laughs, bigger laughs. Good note. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not now. Sorry, sorry. Just thought I could add it. Yeah. Stupid. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in you win some, you lose some news. Regular listeners to our program may remember back in June when I talked about the Supreme Court decision on June 28th, which upheld an Oregon City's ban on homeless residents sleeping outdoors. The case was before our nation's highest court because the Court of Appeal for the Ninth Circuit had found in earlier opinions that it was unconstitutional to punish people for sleeping in public spaces when they have no other legal place to spend the night, which it is by every possible definition of the Constitution. But... And, like, geometry. Yeah, also the geometry. geometry general and, logic. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the Constitution and reality have never slowed down the Supreme Court making a decision. So they threw the decision out, and now California governor and man who asks for money by email almost as much as my meth-addicted cousin is acting on it. Because saying you're liberal is one thing, but acting liberal is icky. Yeah, it's really fucking weird that we keep looking for ways to legally require people to want shit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the geometry problem of this whole thing, Kurt Vonnegut said something like, I'm not getting it just right, but he said something like, thanks to gravity, we all have to be on the surface of the earth, whether we like it or not. So we can't let greedy people hoard all the land. Supreme Court of 2024 and Gavin Newsom. Fuck you in advance. Yeah. It wasn't exactly that, but it was like close. That. Pretty so close. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Yeah. He was so, unstuck in time. Yeah. So, boy, wasn't he. Yeah. So, Gavin called on state and local leaders to quote, God, I love this fucking quote, humanely remove encampments from public spaces. Oh. Prior yeah. End quote. Prioritizing those that most threaten health and safety. Let me say that again, just to be clear. 
He wants to humanely destroy the places where people are living and sleeping, having nowhere else to go, by making sure we destroy the sleeping area and safety of people whose existence is a threat to others' health and safety first. Yeah, I don't... The other type of spaces is private spaces, Gavin. Jesus, man. (laughs) Yeah, and you can't just put the word humane in front of stuff and make it so. No. You have to do stuff to get your adjectives. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. Exactly. And it, it, look, it's worth pointing out that policies like this will have one result and one result only. Uh, more unlucky people will go to jail. Uh, it will not reduce crime. It certainly won't reduce homelessness. It will just put people in prison for what our Supreme Court has now officially declared is the crime of being poor. Well, being too poor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I also I find it really interesting that this came not the day after the SCOTUS legalized it, but the day after it was clear that Gavin Newsom wasn't going to be the Democratic nominee. Weird, right? huh? Hmm. Weird. Either way, extremely disappointing. Uh, If you're a resident of California, I encourage you to participate in democracy, especially locally, where unlike in states like New York, the right to housing is not guaranteed in California. Hell, if you participate enough, someday California might elect an actual liberal. Well, here's hoping. Also, I think it's time for a tent city next to the Supreme Court building right there. Yeah. Or... Uh, anyone's house with an upside down flag. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Humanely. Yeah. Humanely. Humanely. <laughs> yeah. They're in distress because of that flag. Yeah, that flag that. means that you want to get go help them out. Sure. Humanely. Obviously. And in Veep Wrangler news, uh, now that we can consider the election good and shook up, all eyes turn to the next major milestone in the race, and that is, of course, who's going to be the Veep's Veep. So I thought we could uh, maybe go down the list of potentials and pretend that we have any kind of newsworthy insight on them. Uh, Because this will, given the history of the office of vice president, almost certainly not matter in any measurable way. (laughs) I mean, it matters now. Well, yeah, I I love (laughs) Kamala, but look, you could argue that things would not be significantly different right now if Joe's running mate had been a warm biscuit. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Socially conservative, you know, blue dog Democrats in like Virginia, they love a good biscuit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. hard to say how the polling would go on. Yeah, that. right. So let's start with we the have main... insane calculus that we have to do in American politics. It, like yeah. what I just said, it's bananas. Yeah, it really is. So, OK, so let's start with a name that isn't on the list, but would have been my top pick. And that's Heath's governor, Gretchen Whitmer. Whitmer rose to national prominence when a bunch of redneck Trump fans decided to kidnap her for asking him not to spread a plague. They did so badly. With the it's kidnapping. it's fucking hilarious if it's not so terrifying. Yeah. So now she's been one of Biden's most effective campaign surrogates to date, though I guess that doesn't look great on the resume now that he's been chased off the ticket. Uh, she's also got a hell of a record in a state that's going to be crucial to a Democratic victory in November. Yeah. My vote is worth orders of magnitude more than almost everybody else in the country because I am a very special boy. Well, yes, I are. actually I might even be a more special Boy, depending on You're I mean, Eli, boy definitely too. more special than Eli. Yeah, I'm a boy that does not matter. Do even you a do fucking not little. No, no, you don't get a vote. But neither do the idiots you in my neighborhood. For Bob so, you know, my, hey, don't you miss? Don't you speak about my sweet Bobby like that? <laughs> not now in his time of weakness. <laughs> no, unfortunately, though, Whitmer has been pretty clear that she's not in the running because, in addition to having an impressive record and a formidable political presence, she also has a vagina. And there seems to be some kind of a tacit agreement between the Democratic establishment and the media that the VP pick has to be a white guy. Apparently, the American public isn't ready for a ticket with no penises on it at all. Yeah, really? The president and the vice president are going to the bathroom together again? Okay. Anarchy, Noah! Think of the security Jesus risk! Christ. Or or they're, they're both fully understanding the systemic racism of America together yeah, at the right. same time? Yeah. Think. Yeah. Think right. it through. Right. Pandemonium. So from there, I'm going to shift gears into the guy that I would put my money on if I had to put money down, and that is Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. Like Harris, Bashir is a former state attorney general who managed to hold on to his job as governor of a red state as recently as last year. He's young. He's, he's 46, and he looks a lot younger than that. And he's perfectly inoffensive to the kind of voters who miss how vanilla Joe was in more ways than just skin tone. His big downsides uh, is that he's, he's got very little national profile. He's an Epo baby who inherited the governor's mansion from his dad. And he seems to be allergic to talking about climate change. So he'll no doubt piss off the left wing of the party. 
Yeah. Also, he's pretty sure the universe was created in six days by a genocide yeah. ghost. Yeah. So, not my favorite. That's real common amongst these the people on this list. They all really yeah. love the ghost. Um, the next one has a different version of the ghost. Yeah, by same a ghost. Bit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, speaking of pissing off the left wing of the party, that brings us to Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, who seems to be the media favorite for the pick. So much as one has emerged, uh, Shapiro is also a former state attorney general with a proven appeal to rural voters. That's the current euphemism for dumb white people, by the way. In case you haven't picked that up. Uh, and as near as I can tell, he pulls better against Trump than anybody else on Harris's shortlist. Pennsylvania might also be the most important state in the country in terms of swinging the presidential race this year. That being said, Josh Shapiro makes Andy Bashir look like Carl fucking Marx. He is way more conservative than I want, or than I think, honestly, anybody really wants in a Democratic nominee. Okay, all that being said... More than 30% of Trump supporters in Pennsylvania also supported Shapiro. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be connected to any of those people. They're ridiculous. But also, uh, yes, I do. If it means Trump loses. If, yes, I do. If it means that, yeah. Now, Bashir and Shapiro certainly fit the bill for a white guy with executive experience. But at 46 and 51, they don't qualify as old white guy with executive experience, regardless of what Eli implies. I saw you take two naps at Matreon, no illusions. You're damn two. right. Damn right. I took four. You just only saw half of them. Now, if Harris wants that, she could look to the 67 year old governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper. Uh, now, to be honest, I honestly I knew nothing about this dude at all before he started getting mentioned as a VP contender. But his reputation is of a guy that exudes competence. Hard to reconcile that with being a North Carolinian. I know. But that's what the politicos are telling me. OK, he's 67, though. Mm hmm. I'm going to need proof of life by 5 p.m. before <laughs> right, I get on yeah. board with Cooper. Absolutely exactly. not. Now, the biggest problem that all of the potential candidates that I've mentioned so far have is that they have relatively low name recognition nationally. Uh, they're, they're popular in their states, sure, but I, I do current event shit as part of my job, and I could not have told you who Roy Cooper was a week and a half ago. But the next guy I want to talk about, and the only other guy I think is a serious contender for the position— does much better in that department, and that is former astronaut and current Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. He said with a turgid quiver in his you voice. Bet your ass he did. Yeah, no, <laughs> if, I, if I got to pick, it would, be, it would be Mark Kelly. So Kelly is, in addition to a former NASA spaceman, the husband of Gabby Giffords. She's the former U.S. representative that was much better at getting shot than Donald Trump. So much better. Way more heroic and compelling when she did it. Got way better ratings. Anyway, he No rose, fireman. Nope. Yep. Right. Anyway, he rose to prominence as a voice for gun control in the wake of that shooting, and his popularity eventually landed him a seat in the Senate. So his positives are a great story. He's very charismatic, and he's got better name recognition than pretty much any of the other uh, choices. His downsides are that he has less relevant experience than anybody else that we've talked about, and he's known for being anti-gun in a country that uses guns to butter its toast. Okay, I do like the idea of Mark Kelly debating J.D. Vance, mm -hmm. just interrupting everything with like, sorry, no, no, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you just now over the sound of, I've been to fucking outer space, outer <laughs> space, flying. Look, man, I've literally been to the place you're pretending not to believe in. It's a hell of a zinger. It's yeah. a hell of a zinger. Right? <laughs> Uh, now, of course, there are other names on the list of potentials. Pete Buttigieg, J.B. Pritzker, Tim Walls, Cory Booker. And I'm not going to claim to be so plugged into the inner workings of the Democratic machinery that I know how realistic any of those guys are. But I'm pretty sure that that's the field. Gentlemen, two questions. Who do you think it'll be and who do you want it to be? OK, I think I'd bet on Shapiro and I want it to be um literally whoever gives the best chance of winning. I don't <laughs> care. Whoever does the best to maximize the insane protest voters on the fence or the insane independence on the fence. It, it could be Jill Stein's cord blood. It could be <laughs> a warm biscuit. It could be a literal bootstrap. Again, yeah. whatever works. If we need a human being as the VP at a certain point, instead of a bootstrap or a biscuit, we can do another bloodless coup. We can do it right, coup honestly, we want. yeah. And Shapiro makes sense because there's no path to victory without Pennsylvania's 19 electoral votes. If he locks in Pennsylvania, I'm all the way up. I, I yeah. think that there actually is a path for Kamala that there wasn't for Biden without Pennsylvania. But yeah, yeah, it would be damn tricky. Yeah. My hope is for Bashir, but I think we'll get Mark Kelly, if only because it means no, we'll have a crush on the vice president. I always had a crush on the vice president for years, bro. It's true. And in circling back to couch fucking news, 
Donald Trump. You got to pull the pin out. mate. It's very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, you got to pull that pin. You got to pull that pin. Dangerous indeed. Trump chose a running mate for his campaign last week, and he went with a guy who's been described as a teacup pig got fucked by the blockchain. <laughs> what a terribly mean thing to say about teacup pigs. It is. They're delightful. Yeah. That's right. Withdrawn. Teacup so pig that would be his headphones on the subway. millionaire finance bro and brand new senator from Ohio. I forget his name. It's like it's DJ Pants or, or something <laughs> like that. It doesn't matter. He's the fucking worst. To his credit, but not really, Pants came from a poor working class background and somehow managed to make it as a cishet white guy in America. Huh. Dreams can come true. And now he's the living embodiment of of that close talking mansplaining guy from the meme and he's just yelling bootstraps in your ear the whole time. He's also an evangelical Catholic, anti-choice, anti-same-sex marriage, and anti-gun control. Also, he fucked a couch huh. or he mm -hmm. didn't. Wow. We have no way of knowing for this certain. This is how we ended <laughs> up lower on the graph than Joe Rogan <laughs> and Ethan Ray. <laughs> Everything I just said is true. You don't know if he's fucked a couch or not. Nope. Very possible, but not for sure. But according to a now debunked viral tweet in his memoirs, Hillbilly Elegy, in that book, he wrote a story about fucking a latex glove in between the cushions of a couch. That's according to the now debunked tweet. That is not in the book. That's why it got. No. Debunked. Yeah, exactly. It's not. Uh, and it's not in an earlier edition of the book either. It's just shit. Not I was just about to make up that lie. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the important thing, though, is that the autocomplete for did J.D. Vance is have sex with a couch. And I don't need much more out of life than that. Really, honestly, that three squares a day in a roof. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy man. That's some delightful SEO right there. So here's what happened with the couch fucking story. Following the announcement of DJ Pants as Trump's running mate, somebody made up a weird lie on the Internet about the couch story in the book. A bunch of people repeated the claim and made jokes because... That's an easy dunk. Then the Associated Press wrote an article fact-checking that claim with the headline, No, DJ Pants did not have sex with a couch. But then they deleted the article wanting to make a few more edits, and that deletion made people even more confident <laughs> yeah. about the story. <laughs> so, well, and, look, and, in defense of the troll who started this, way to walk up to the exact edge of the credibility line, Right. Like, any further than fuck the couch would have been too far. We would have been like, oh, this is just a fucking troll. But fuck the couch is exactly far enough. And then he added the inside out glove detail. That's just all oh, the fairest similitude <laughs> of that. Right. This this might be the high point of trollery of all fucking time. Right. Also, if you're accusing Republicans of sexual deviancy, sometimes you're just going to hit the target statistically. Right. Like, it's a good guess. Yes. No, couch fucking would be a good guess for him. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Would you flip the glove inside out? Do you feel like the powder's better on the one side or the I other? Mean, the, Is the, that the viral what's going tweet on there? Said he flipped it inside. Yeah, out, so. yeah. I'm trying to decide how I would do it. Doesn't matter. What the moisturizing. So the stuff. okay. Yeah. Now we're brainstorming. Anyway, we'll we'll circle back to that off the air. I'll so fuck a couch. The, I'm not the, ashamed. <laughs> the couch <laughs> fucking theory. It was dumb, and uh, Eli seems to agree with me. Also judgy, yes. right? Yeah. But there's plenty of other stuff to criticize. About DJ Doesn't Pants. Fuck couches. He sucks. For example, <laughs> he he might have. For example, though, he did an interview in 2021 with Tucker Carlson, during which he, well, during which he was doing an interview with Tucker. That's Carlson. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. The content was also bad. He attacked Kamala Harris for not having biological kids and called her a quote miserable cat lady. And not that it matters, but Kamala Harris is married and has two stepkids. And she doesn't have cats. Either way, after receiving backlash when that comment resurfaced recently, Senator Pants did an interview with Megyn Kelly. It was last week. And he tried to clarify. I, I mean, he didn't clarify at all, but he tried, I guess. He said, quote, it's not a criticism of people who don't have children. This is about criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti-family and anti-child. Well, but it is, though. Right. Like, yeah. no, the, but it, you said the words, though, that are like, that's the kind of excuse that's normally preceded by you're feeling very sleepy. 
Also, dude, have you met a cat lady? They are not miserable. They're fucking ecstatic. They're hanging right? out with their cats. They're buying mugs that says stuff about their cats on them. They're having the best time. Yeah, can yeah. confirm. <laughs> so Pants had another big stumble during one of his first appearances on the campaign trail when he tried to do a joke, I think. Oh my it's God. hard to say. I think he tried to do a joke. <laughs> He was complaining that Democrats are always accusing things of being racist. I'm pretty sure that's because of all the racism, but Pants had one of his classic bits ready to go. I'm sure this one slayed at the supper clubs at Yale. He said, quote, I had a diet Mountain Dew yesterday and one today, and I'm sure they're going to call that racist, too. Oh, and the audience's non-reaction to this joke was amazing. Right. Like crickets just elbowed their way at the front of the room so that they could make the noise and emphasize it. A lone voice all but said, I don't get it into the <laughs> echoey silence. And then fucking Vance basically did the this guy knows what I'm talking about dip bit. It was fucking delicious. <laughs> who's who's drinking tonight? <laughs> A diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Yeah. Well, just for the record, diet Mountain Dew is revolting and it's definitely racist 100 percent. wow noah you do not have to let him attack your favorite the, wine he's talking about the like diet that. i he's am here for diet. you yeah it's fine i'm just saying okay. <laughs> from the vintage so here's a few more details about dj pants he claims that he really likes led zeppelin but he's a liar nope. you can just tell he's <laughs> lying about that absolutely not his actual favorite musician is lee Greenwood. Okay. And he says that proud to be an American makes him tear up. Also worth noting, he's only a senator because billionaire conservative crazy person Peter Thiel bought him the election. Yep. Well, and because Ohio is garbage, that also helped. Peter Thiel, by the way, is the guy who's working on creating the steroid Olympics with no rules about PEDs. That's really a project he's doing. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to sidetrack us, but that is a great fucking idea. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Would some pain juice ruin the experience of watching mutants with a third grade education swim real fast? Like, let's take this baby out for a spin. How fast can it go? Be stupid. My, so, so my favorite aspect. Because <laughs> all they do is swim, Noah. They'd have to be so much faster for me to be like, yeah, now I like it better. Yeah. They will be. If, if the field is be. all just approximately the same to get, it's like, oh, they're all a little faster. Great. They're going to be so That's much right. faster. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be like a motorboat <laughs> out there, baby. <laughs> so, okay. My favorite aspect of Vance <laughs> is that he's supposedly there to appeal to rural voters because of his pedigree as like, you know, grew up in a small town, whatever, whatever. But as I understand it, he spends his whole book shitting on them as lazy drug addicts that should have just pulled themselves up by their bootstraps like he did. So I don't think he's going to quite hit that. Yeah, no, he sucks. And worst of all, well, in, in terms of intellectual integrity, DJ Pants actually hates Donald Trump. Yep. In his now deleted social media history that, <laughs> that he seems to think is magically erased from ever existing, Pants called Trump cultural heroin and also wondered if Trump would become America's Hitler. Yep. So maybe DJ Pants enjoys cultural heroin and Adolf Hitler or and this is the better version. He's a spineless opportunistic piece of shit who decided to take the running mate job anyway. And. Bottom line, I think we can all agree that fucking a couch or not fucking a couch is the best thing about him. Like, who here among us hasn't either fucked a couch or not fucked a couch? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> exactly. Relatable, DJ it's, Pants. It's either here or there. Yeah. Yes. Man of the people. <laughs> and in Grift of Gab News, ever since the first shot was fired at former President Trump, our nation has been abuzz with questions. Was he an Antifa far leftist, as Fox News has warned us? Was he a right winger? Because those guys do literally 100% of the mass shootings and 100 is all of the numbers. Was Jack Black always a chicken shit poser? Or did that happen <laughs> when he cashed the check for Kung Fu Panda 3? Well, we might not know the answer to all those questions, but thanks to the fine... It's yes about Jack Black. It is Black. yes about Jack Black. It's yes about Jack Fuck Black. Fuck that guy. 
Anyways, we might not know the answer to all those questions, but thanks to the fine sleuthing work of Gab CEO Andrew Torba, <laughs> we can finally conclude that he was a Biden supporter. Or the lying liar who built a Twitter more conducive to lying than Twitter isn't telling the truth. Yeah, no, the FBI may have the resources, but he has the gumption. He's a moxie guy. He's a bootstrap yeah. guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Very much. Yes, Torba, who listeners to our program might remember for his various connections to white supremacy, including making white supremacy a social media website, which mm -hmm. was directly implicated in the attempted overthrow of our government. But he's got some news for us. So he took to Twitter because... His own website is so much less popular yep. to say, quote, <laughs> yesterday, in the process of responding to an emergency disclosure request from a U.S. law enforcement agency, Gab learned that a pro Biden Harris account on the site was believed to have belonged to Thomas Matthew Crooks, who was attempted... holding a samurai sword and doing some sort of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm getting into character. Getting yeah, into of course, character. Obviously. I borrowed this from James Lindsay. I have to get it back <laughs> before bedtime. Can't sleep without it. <laughs> Who attempted to assassinate President Trump after backing up the account, we notified the public. I, I do not get this obsession, right? Your fucking side, your side led a deadly attack against the Capitol in an effort to overthrow the elected government while wearing your guy's merch marching away from his fucking rally. I feel like our side should be able to shoot your next seven candidates. We'd still be ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to shoot a gun at Donald Trump, but I get it. Like, I'd say the worst thing about Tommy Crooks is the fact that he had an account on Gap. I was going to say, yeah, really. more the worst thing I about wonder that which being. policy he follows. Up. Anyways, he continues, quote, Gap.com has published the first evidence, making it very apparent that Crooks was a left wing partisan who hated President Trump's immigration policies, noting that the shooter fired on President Trump when he started talking about those same policies. This raises the possibility for the first time that his attempted assassination of President Trump was the latest instance of a wider pattern of left wing domestic terrorism that has plagued okay. our country since the summer of 2020. Oh, just just because we terrify you doesn't make us terrorists, bro. That's just that's a you thing. Yeah, that wider pattern he's talking about includes Drag race being a TV show and people <laughs> exist. Yeah, right. It's the opening of the Olympics and yeah. shit. Yeah. He concludes, Gab.com will continue to fight for the free speech rights of all Americans. Free speech allows truths like this to surface while censorship seeks to hide the facts in darkness. May God bless our great nation. Andrew <laughs> Sorba, relax. CEO, Gab.com. Christ is king. <laughs> Okay, what censorship? Th this was a story in the New York Post and the Daily Mail yeah. and the Daily Beast and the Daily Dot and the Hindustan <laughs> Times. What <laughs> right. are you talking about? Right. But Heath, you wonder, what are these damning screenshots? Well, they're um, incredibly milquetoast corrections of liars on Gab who repeated Trump's bullshit claims about immigration. Uh, one of the replies, which, again, we have no evidence besides Torba's words are actually from the assassin, is a response to at cat turd that just says, didn't you also think Biden would lose in a landslide? Yeah, I would not be very confident in your election predictions. Well, OK, but to be fair, that is the most vociferous defense of Joe Biden online in at least two months. Yeah, that's anyway. true. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I want to be clear. I don't know if this was Thomas Crooks or not. I do know Andrew Torber is a lying liar who lies. And if this is a lie, it's not even a good one, right? What I'm saying is the election's right back on track, everybody. We're yep. doing business as usual. Aren't we, though? And finally tonight, in Sharkotics news. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you can't even get a job as a fucking shark these days without taking a drug test, and the sharks aren't doing great. We learned that from a team of Brazilian narcs who published a study last week showing that sharks are on cocaine. In fact, they found that the sharks they tested had more than 100 times as much cocaine in their systems as had been previously observed in marine life. So Trump's whole sinking boat electric battery calculus just shifted <laughs> considerably. Okay, listen, listen up, sharks. I'm going to call my guy, and then I'm diving into the water. Just be, <laughs> just be cool about it. 
No, guys. My guy is my son. Guys, yeah, I right. realize Jaws just wanted to tell everybody about his business ideas. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Very enthusiastically. It's like Grubhub on your phone. <laughs> so uh, Keep that's clicking a- your jaws. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of caveats on this story. The first is that the study is shockingly small, right? So the researchers tested 13 sharks in total all from the same species, and as near as I can tell, they were all caught from pretty much the same place, and not all of them had the reported levels of cocaine. So I, I don't know what we can extrapolate uh, from this other than that those particular sharks know how to party. The other caveat is the actual amounts, though two orders of magnitude above previously measured levels, were tiny, right? Like you would have to snort a dozen of these sharks to even get a buzz. I guess you could say the study <laughs> bumped the shark. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God. <laughs> It's the whole beautiful. reason we did an episode was to set Heath up yeah. for that joke. Yeah, It's the mushroom now, cloud of jokes. Yep. Beautiful. So, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> now, as to why the sharks have so much booger sugar in their system to begin with, we don't have a definitive answer. If you're like me, you probably immediately thought of all the cocaine trafficking along the Atlantic coast of the Americas and how much of the time they have to like drop their shipments. And the reason we thought about yeah. that is because we're racists. Okay, I was picturing Al Pacino the shark, Scarface uh-huh. style, with his face in a giant pile of cocaine. And his accent was racist. It was problematic. Racist, it was yeah. problematic. And we're owning right. up to that. Yeah. Um, so, so while that probably does contribute to it, these researchers point out that you don't actually need to invoke drug runners dumping cocaine to explain the amounts they're finding. The fact is, is that water treatment centers can't filter out shit like cocaine and meth from our urine. So when you use those type of drugs, you just uh, like you piss them back into the ocean eventually. I knew there was a reason Charlie Sheen wanted me to piss in his mouth. Mm -hmm. I I just thought he liked me. Well, you said yes. He does like you. I Um, hope so. So given that the sample size was so ridiculously small, the conclusion so tenuous, and the mechanism so speculative, you might be wondering why do this study at all? And not to impugn the researchers here, but I feel like the answer to that is headlines. Right? Sharks on cocaine is an irresistible headline. It is a rush to the skeptocrat notes a day early, hoping Heath and Eli haven't already called dibs on it kind of story. It's newsworthy in a way that sharks have dangerously high levels of suntan lotion or fertilizers or insecticides just isn't, right? But it serves as the same kind of reminder that the shit that we're doing has eternal consequences that are felt all over the food chain. And most importantly, cocaine bear versus cocaine shark uh-huh. versus alien versus predator. Oh, oh shit. Uh, spoilers, at the end of the movie, they start a bad band that practices twice and then never gets together yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> now, as near as we can tell, uh, we're in very little danger of sharks now going on a cocaine field rampage of destruction or whatever. And if they did, I feel like we could take them. You know, the, the sharks that they tested are tiny little sharks. Like 13 inches long or whatever. And also, hey, humans are on cocaine too. But it's important to remember that these effects aren't limited to the animals that they tested. The researchers involved in this study intend to test larger sharks, rays, and sea turtles in the future. And we also had headlines in the same week about Komodo dragons having iron-tipped teeth, and then another story about a swarm of hundreds of alligators getting together for a fucking unexplained gator rave less than 50 miles from my house. So just be careful where you're pissing your cocaine. Okay, now, now you sound like Charlie. Can I say that? <laughs> you sound just like him. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Steve King, Andy Wine, Gen X Nerd, Eli.is.keats, Thank you. Anna Frogs, Smith Victory, Audrey Arnett, my real name is Aaron Two, Shannon Latham, Jason Rucker, Tinkerton, Sean Young, Audio Emu, Santa Grimnar, Aspirant to the Priesthood of Celine the Cat, Cadaver Mouse, Celeste de la Cabra, Bryson King, Christopher Stutz, Stephen Carlson, Lub Truck, Caniac Squirrel, Franz Kummerspeck, and Gremico. You are the perfect mint julep in a frosty copper mule mug on a hot summer morning, and we love you. 
and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people. If you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical Stylings You Heard Today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Exactly. I said and weird in the first You did, you did. You, and then I you moved said it on, again. And I'm so mad. And you did it again. I have to do it way. over. I'm so sorry. I'd like to go back and say cocaine bear differently also. <laughs> I said that weird. This, cocaine. You said it here and then you said it again here. Both times it was weird. And I, it was cocaine it, bear. It was a Co- weird pause. Cocaine. And cocaine. cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. And we find a movie. To, no, I, I'll do it after. You go. You do it on your own. You got it all night, buddy. Uh, yeah. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, if you're thinking of starting therapy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I got this. This Look, here's the take. Right now, if I say it right, it stays chill. Yep. Otherwise, this is the next 25 minutes. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. Bullet point. If, damn it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fucking chance. There you, just, we, no the, we, you got uh, you got like halfway into ah, uh, and we're like, oh come on, you're not even trying. <laughs> I just thought maybe if I disrupted my own pattern. Okay. All right. So we you want me this. to give you? You want me to lead you in again? Yeah. All right. Eli, have you considered that? <laughs> Are you making unhealthy comparisons, Eli? <laughs> Therapy for wanting to be right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I literally have to stop. I, I'm just going to not get to say yeah. I'm just going to have to move on. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient. Wow. We're professionals. This, this is I the rest of our the, night. The we laughter in my, I can hear the laughter in my own voice is the problem. So I sound like Yeah, hysterical. we can hear it too. Yep. <laughs> Everybody can hear it. Everybody can hear in it. In their ears. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Calm. Calm. Damn it. I said I, I was said gonna I do to... other shit tonight. You know? I was gonna play some video games. This is early. This is early. We did Olympics. it. Mm. Think about the Olympics. This is for the Olympics. Mm. All right. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief. <laughs> you sound like you're doing that at gunpoint, dude. I mean, honestly, you sound like you're, you I'm shocked your gunpoint. balls until you agreed to do this. It guy. sounds like you're trying to tell us you're being kidnapped in this ad copy. <laughs> it's this. This is the ad. It all stays in. It has to. Oh, this is Otherwise, all in the sketch. They won't understand why it's like this. <laughs> Better help would be like, we got a seven minute ad this week. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so grateful. They said our copy so many times. <laughs> Loving this. All right. Just uh, say, talk normal. I don't have a normal <laughs> anymore. All right. Um, Where are your arms right now? They're clutching my knees. <laughs> clutching my knees. <laughs> I can. Hear your arms clutching your knees. Yeah, they're just they're just squeeze. Whatever skin is there is just white. The knuckles are white. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible. <laughs> there was just zero chance. No one ever thought you had that. Start again. <laughs> you got to keep the first. You paragraph. didn't think you didn't think you had it. We didn't think you had it. Nobody thought you had okay. it. Okay, sip of water. Sip of water. Cleansing. Entirely online. It is. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You went insane with the end this time. <laughs> truly, I, the truly, truly you, to be you're, normal. you're drunk with power about the word <laughs> and here. He thought, I'm going to give myself one more take, and if I don't get it, you need to this, say Whatever this you say next is the fucking take, man. <laughs> so good luck. Okay. <sighs> It's entirely Slur online. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no addition. <laughs> <laughs> you had it! You were there! Oh, and then awesome. you got to the and and, and you then you were like, like hey, comma hey, hey, hey. and <laughs> Why did I say out comma? <laughs> At any time for no, no additional. No, cut. <laughs> Start it again. It's entirely online. I what if you just now? do it like a word at a time? Yeah. And I'll it's, cut them together yeah. like a fucking ransom letter of magazine <laughs> letters. It's entirely online. <laughs> designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Oh, God. Come. Just fill out. I'm not doing it. I'm doing this. <laughs> you have to. Make an AI of my voice. I give consent. It's entirely online. It's entirely <laughs> online. You, you, were, you sounded like a like you were trying to like, impress me with your like the architect that built your house just Right, now. like I could say the word entirely. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. <laughs> Switch there. No, I had it. I you had you it. still have it. You what? still have it. I still, I got it. You, you still have it. And switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So I can find the right therapist for me without all the legwork? Exactly. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. That's degrading better- fast. <laughs> That's better help. H E L P. I know. You're trying to outrun your own laughter with your I, voice. This is it's ridiculous. It's a cry for help. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn out to be 25 minutes. You thought you were exaggerating, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. This is mm. the reading equivalent of trying to run to the bathroom when you have to shit, but you yes. can't run because if you move your legs too much, it's a <laughs> exactly. big problem. Yes. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, guys. Well, I give this conversation a 7 out of 10. Wait, why only a 7? Because Eli took 700 fucking tries <laughs> to send the goddamn copy. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I'm going to nail this ad in one take. <laughs> You'll see. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.